Good evening everyone, I'm showing off my new ultra gauge that I've bought. It's an OBD2 scan tool, is what it's best known as. It's a very small device, it's about half the size of my hand. And it's basically serving as my additional dashboard if you like. It plugs into the OBD2 port which is down underneath the footwell and using a, uh, what protocol was it, it's a CAN 11-bit protocol this one is using. It's already been set up so I should just show it off for you. I have to put the car into ignition and it's supposed to wake up. There we go. So I've got four screens programmed in and they have their own functions. Plus you can go through the menu here and configure everything else, fuel, vehicle setup, configuration for the device, displays, alarms, and trouble codes, which is what this thing is very good at detecting. Oops, and I have known. Thank God for that. So on each screen I've just set them up for each, uh, for different functions. So this being page one has my RPM and spe uh, vehicle speed sensor, the absolute throttle position sensor. So I push the accelerator pedal down, it picks it up further, and as I take it off, it goes down. Percent engine under load, distance to empty, and instant liters per hundred kilometers. On the next page is my fuel tank statistics, which I've set up for myself. So I have the amount of liters remaining in my tank and how many kilometers to go until I run out again. Average liters per 100 k is an instantaneous below. Short trip run time, so for every time I start the car, that timer starts again. And my average speed over, over the tank of fuel. It's actually pretty low. Third page is my performance page, so again, revolutions per minute, and speed, tachometer, speedo, and then I have the amount of horsepower the car is generating, which is calculated by the engine control unit, and the amount of torque, which I have to tell it how much the car can actually put out, and then it'll calculate from there onwards. And then page four is my statistics for each trip. It only holds the current trip I'm doing, so it's just short trip. That's the trip meter, the amount of fuel I've used this trip in litres, short trip run time, litres per kilometre, uh, kilometers, sorry, litres per hundred kilometres this trip, average speed this trip, and distance to empty, so I still have that on almost every page. As you can see, it has got a little heartbeat symbol indicating that it is receiving information from the OBD2 port and each time it beats, it's updating. And that little symbol up here is the open loop, closed loop, fuel loop indicator. So it should generally say closed loop, so I'll actually just start the car. There we go. The loop will close itself off eventually. It doesn't look like it's going to do it in a hurry. It'll stay open loop. Oh, there we go, closed loop. It's generally open loop when it's cold temp uh, cold engine. And oh, we might, uh, we'll see that the instantaneous fuel consumption has gone up to almost a thousand. It can't show any higher than 999. Simply for the fact that I'm not going anywhere, but there's still fuel being burnt, so naturally my DTE is going down as well. So just to, uh, just for that example, I will just give you a quick run, uh, run the engine up quickly. As you can see, it's pretty responsive, but I like actually having a number there as opposed to my actual dashboard. I might actually make that. There we go. A bit more visible which is just a block of bars that moves across. The Ultra Gauge does also have an ambient light sensor in it. So it is um, able to detect when it gets darker and the screen does darken accordingly. 
do apologize for a glitch if we've just had one and the camera accidentally shut off. I was just saying about the light sensor, it will lighten and darken accordingly. If the light outside changes, it'll adjust brighter or, uh, or darker. As you switch the engine off, it's still an accessory, as you can hear they've got music playing. And yeah, let's switch the car back on. It's in the it's in run now, but I actually have to push a button if I want to wake it up now. But if I start the car, it'll twi uh, it'll switch on automatically. But the little key indicator you'll notice that it's going to turn off is that the closed open loop indicator at the top right disappears. Ready? There we go. Disappears as soon as it's about to turn off. Come on, wake up. There we go. So I bought this from Ultra Gauge's website, it's ultra-gauge.com, and it cost me, oh, uh, how much did it cost? 70, dollars? 70 US dollars. It does have a nine dollar mail-in rebate, but I'm not going to bother about that, because I think it's going to be too much bloody hassle, to be honest with you. So with that all here in mind, I've got... This little unit, it's on the side of my window here, there's my passenger window, oh sorry, driver's window, what am I even saying, the driver's window, that little triangle, I have no idea why it's even there, so I put it to better use, and suction that on there, but I wonder if I should mount it up somewhere else, maybe say up here, because I can just look at it from up here, and it's be sitting up there, but as you can see, I don't know how well that comes up on the video, pretty well from the looks of it. If it likes to focus, I really don't know why it doesn't stay focused, but from up here where I'm looking, I've got a pretty good view of it in the corner of my vision, my dashboard over there, and it's relatively not that distracting actually. I mean, once I'm actually going, there's a ton of numbers flicking past me, but other than that, with the assortment of other devices I have in my car, there's a thermometer up here. I don't know how well that comes up. There we go. So I've got a thermometer measuring outside inside temperature, which this can do via the air intake temperature, which is really going to be accurate if you're actually at speed, otherwise, it's going to be picking up the temperature of. Oh, I forget what it's called. But it's not going to be 100% accurate if you're just sitting idle. But it can also measure its own temperature as well. It's got somewhere in there. Was, um, oh, what was it? Oh, I'm shocking with this. I'm still getting used to this thing. Okay. Page settings. I'll enable page... I don't think that beep can be turned off, but it's got its perks. Oh, another thing that this thing does with its beep is that it, um, it'll beep at you if you go over a con pre-configured alarm, such as if you've got an alarm set for, say, the speed limit at 110, which, mind you, it does warn you never to enter the um, menu, mo uh, menu mode whilst you're actually driving the car. But these are all the gauges my car supports. It supports 59 of the blasted things as well. So i got all of these gauges. I'll just scro slowly scroll through them all so you can keep up with them. And I don't even know what about half of these are. Oh, come on. There we go. Miles was check engine light on, that's what CEL, trouble code is TC. Got barometric. Two. Uh, gauge number two.
So let's try page five. Okay, that's pretty crazy. That says the current temperature inside is 21.1 here. This thing's registering its own temperature to be 24 degrees, but it might be to do with the fact I've been holding it just now. Let's actually... Try... A different barometric reading inches of mercury. Again, I don't understand parametrics properly, so I'm just going to turn that off, I think. Well, that about wraps it up, pretty much. This is just what I bought. Sorry, it's always such a long video whenever I buy anything. Uh, yeah, this is my new little toy I've got, so I'll be using this for monitoring my fuel economy as always, and maybe I'll actually be a slightly better driver with my petrol. <laughs> that time will tell. Until then, good night.